There is a place, do 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 do, somewhere in space, ba do da do da, where magical things are happening. Everything you can't be imagining. The enchanted planet is charmed and truly magical. The enchanted planet is everything imaginable. The enchanted. Hi, friend. Nice to see you today. It is a beautiful day on our enchanted planet. It is a place where everything is possible. My name's Serendipity. I'm a teacher and I love hanging out with kids just like you. I also love to find ways to find my happy place, and I do that through singing and dancing and reading books, so I have a lot of things to share with you today. One thing we're learning about today is how to find our happy place, and one way I do that is to take big, deep breaths of this fresh, clean, beautiful air. Would you like to take a few deep breaths with me? Let's start with a big inhale, okay? Inhale one, exhale. Let's go two more times. Inhale, please. Exhale. One more time. Big inhale. And exhale. <laughs> that did help me find my happy place. I am at my happiest when I'm really moving around and being with great friends just like you. So what do we have in store for today, you might be wondering? I have got a really great story time for us to hear today. We're going to learn some Spanish from my friend Sandra, the librarian. We're also going to have an incredibly fun hip hop dance party with my friend Chaz. And we are going to learn some new things from Grand Sappy and my animal friends. Are you ready for an adventure? Come on. My friend Sandra, the librarian, has been teaching me how to speak some Spanish phrases. I am loving learning Spanish with you. It is so much fun. And you're doing so good. Thank you. Practice helps. Yes. It really does. So because I was talking to my friend about feeling happy, mm -hmm. I was curious, how do you say happy in Ooh, Espanol? Feliz. Feliz. Oh, I like that. Can we try it together? Absolutely. Let's all say it together. Ready? Feliz. Ooh, that's nice. That does make me feel happy. Yeah, that's wonderful. Especially when you put on a smile, too. That helps. It's hard to say Felice with a frown. I know. Felice. Not as easy. <laughs> You're funny. Were you able to bring that book that we talked about <gasps> oh, today? Yes, thanks for reminding me. Oh, I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. Hmm. I love this book, friends. Ooh. Oh, wonderful. This is exactly the book I was hoping for. This is written by a good friend of mine named Lisa Wimberger, and its title is... The Monster Under Your Bed is Just a Story in Your Head. Peanut gets ready for bed. She brushes her teeth, gets into her snuggly pajamas, and climbs into her warm bed. All is well. But then, Peanut does something she seems to do a lot lately. She makes a little visit to the library in her mind. She goes here often to look through memories and stories that live there. She likes to look for the perfect bedtime story to tell herself. Strangely, the library is a very big place inside her child-sized head. It's amazing how so many memories and stories can fit inside. She's greeted by the librarian, Mr. Hippocampus, who is always there to help her retrieve her bedtime story. Peanut calls him Mr. Hippo, which sounds like it's short for hippopotamus. But what's really strange is that he doesn't look like a hippopotamus at all. Rather, he looks like a seahorse. Mr. Hippo greets Peanut in the usual way, with a big warm smile and a hearty, Welcome to the library of your stories. Which story would you like to read today? Mr. Hippo is so helpful. Anytime Peanut wanted to remember something, he's always there helping. Would you like the story of the time you got a big hug from your mother? Or would you prefer the story of the time when you ate so much yummy food, your belly made you happy? Asks Mr. Hippo. Even though Peanut really loves the stories that make her feel warm and fuzzy, it seems that before she knows it, she asks for a very different sort of story. The one about the big scary monster that lives under her bed. 
Now, Peanut knows that a big monster could never fit under her bed, and even though her parents tell her many times that it isn't real, she spends a lot of time feeling scared of this story anyway. The more she feels scared of it and thinks about it, the more important Mr. Hippo thinks it is. Wanting to be a helpful librarian, Mr. Hippo keeps this important story handy and waiting for Peanut any time she wants to visit the library. Mr. Hippo simply wants to do a good job, giving Peanut the story she asks for most. With the familiar but made-up monster story in hand, Peanut heads for the door where she encounters her old friend, Miss Amy, short for Miss Amygdala, which Peanut could never pronounce correctly. Miss Amy looks strangely like a plump almond. These library folks sure look peculiar. Miss Amy opens the door for her and asks, Which story did you get today, Peanut? Peanut holds up the monster under the bed story. Oh, that one comes with all sorts of things to make it more interesting. Wait here, I'll get them for you. Miss Amy dashes away and quickly returns with a bag of things. She pulls out a coat that looks way too small, and she stuffs Peanut into it anyway. When she buttons it too tightly, Peanut can't breathe so well. Her arms feel tense and frozen in very snug sleeves. This doesn't feel very good. And then Miss Amy takes out a too small hat and jams Peanut's head into it. It feels too tight and gives her a headache. Yuck, this doesn't feel good at all. But just when she thinks she can leave to read her story, Miss Amy takes out one more item, a necklace. She places it on Peanut's neck, but it too is very small, and pinches a little bit so that Peanut can't swallow well. Miss Amy says, now you are ready to read the story and feel all of the feelings that make this monster story seem real. Peanut feels tight, stuck, unable to breathe easily or swallow with a terrible headache. Yes, Peanut feels stress and fear, and this seems very familiar when she thinks about each time she reads this very same story. Even though Miss Amy helps her feel this way, she's not a mean person. She's just doing her job to make the story seem more real. But she gives Peanut some great advice before she leaves. Peanut, remember that once you stop reading this story, I'll take back all of the items, and you can go back to feeling calm, breathing deeply, and thinking clearly, like the way you feel when you aren't feeling fear. When will that be? Whenever you are ready to read a different story. Peanut wonders why she keeps reading the scary story instead of some of the ones that make her feel good. And precisely when she thinks this, Miss Amy adds, Sometimes the scary stories are easier to retrieve because they come with strong feelings, and strong feeling stories are filed up front in the library, so Mr. Hippo doesn't have to go too far to get them for you. Peanut stops for a moment and asks, What if I don't want to read this story anymore, but it's up front? How do I get a different story to be filed up front so Mr. Hippo gets that one easily? Miss Amy smiles her biggest, warmest smile. That's a great question, and one of life's most precious secrets. Do you think you are ready to learn such a precious secret? With all her heart, Peanut nods yes. Miss Amy steps in closer, kneels down, and takes Peanut's hand. Listen carefully. You have read this particular story many times. The more you do anything, the easier it is for you to do that thing. So getting this story and feeling scared is now easy for you. That's exactly what happens when you practice being scared. So now you have to practice feeling safe, warm, and cozy. You have to choose a different story and tell it to yourself many times for it to be practiced enough to be easy. You have to stop all throughout the warm story and ask, what types of things can your body feel during this story? Let's try that together. When you think of the story of when you got your biggest hug, what did your belly feel like? Warm, calm, and full? Great. Now let's spend a few moments with our eyes closed, practicing feeling warm, calm, and full in the belly. After a few moments of imagining this, Peanut begins to feel it. What else might you feel when you're getting your biggest hug? Protected and safe and soft in my chest? And then Miss Amy asks Peanut to close her eyes and practice that. After a few more minutes, Peanut is breathing deeply and feeling safe. Suddenly, she realizes she is no longer holding the monster story. The too small coat is gone, her necklace and her hat disappear. Confused, she asks what happened. You wrote a new story and practiced it. You were so busy doing that, you couldn't hold on to the scary story. So, Mr. Hippo filed it on a back shelf. How do you feel now? 
I feel good. I'm not scared. Will you come back tomorrow before bed and retrieve this new story we wrote together today? Yes, I will. But how should I ask for it? Let's give it a name or a favorite color so that when you come back, you can tell Mr. Hippo how to find it for you. Okay, I'll call it Purple Yummy. Miss Amy speaks softly and says, Wonderful. I'll look forward to making your goodie bag for Purple Yummy then. She leans in to give Peanut a kiss on the top of her head. And before you know it, Peanut is fast asleep. I love hula hoops. Do you know how to hula hoop? That was really fun to watch our friends hula hooping. I also love art projects. I invited my friend Mr. Rizzo today to have him teach us how to make hedgehogs. He's teaching it to his second grade class, so it is a little bit of a harder project. Make sure if you're going to try it at home that you have your guardian with you. Let's watch this really fun tinker time with Mr. Rizzo. Hello, my name is John Rizzo. We're gonna make a little hedgehog together. I've already started and prepared this piece of wood for us. Originally, this was a, a long board that was two and a half inches wide, one and a half inches thick. I cut off just a five inch section and then I cut some 45 degree angles. So now the work we're gonna do together is we're gonna round his back and then we're gonna sand him all smooth and then pound in the nails. You can see, I've got a collection of rasps. So a rasp is sort of like metal sandpaper. It has sharp teeth. I'm gonna use this one, it's got a nice handle. All right, look at that, pretty round. So now we're gonna start sanding. So first we're gonna use 60 grit sandpaper. Now that we've got it sanded all smooth, so I've got a, uh, a box of nails here. I just want to clamp him in again. Take my hammer. Of course, you got to be careful with the hammer when it hits your fingers. A lot of the power in the hammer is in the weight of the head. And so the trick is to hold it here towards the end so you can swing it and let the weight of that hammer fall. If you get up too close, you're just using too much muscle. It'll be great. So we're going to go ahead and pound in these nails. Got to really make sure the clamp is tight. All right, looking pretty good. Yeah, I had so much fun making a hedgehog with you today, and I hope yours turns out even better than mine. Those hedgehogs were so cute. That was so much fun. Now, I'm starting to feel like it's getting time for dance party time. Let's go. You know what time it is? Do you know what time oh, it is? Oh, friend, I know what time it is. Hell. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. It's dance party time. Dance party. Dance party. We're gonna fall. Oh, dance party. She getting ding ding. Dance party. Dance now. Dance. 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 So I wanted to invite Chaz back today to sing his hip hop hippopotamus oh, song. Oh boy. Oh, this is such a good song, friends. And what we need you to do is get up with us because we're going to do some real fun hip hop dancing. That's all some right. Pop, yeah, yeah. Some pop, yeah. yeah. some blah, some blah. What do you do? <laughs> we gonna move. You just have a good time. Mm -hmm. Just let go, mm -hmm. feel the rhythm, feel the beat, yes. and just dance. That's it. And we're going to go through this two times. The first time, I want you to listen to Chaz singing. I want you to feel your body, try out some cool moves that you've maybe never tried before, because this song's gonna invite that. And then we're going to do it another time and just like get it. And just let go. Let it go. Let there it you go. go. Now, one thing I want to remind us before we ever dance is that we need our own personal space. Absolutely. Because if I really start to dance right now, I might hit Chaz. Okay. And so we need our own personal space a little bit. Okay. Are you good? I feel good about that. Ugh. And we've got friends who are going to come up here on our beautiful portal. And so we want to make sure that we can see our friends too. You have the opportunity to be involved and be on one of these backdrops sometime. Have your adult look onto our website and learn more how you can be a part of one of our future dance parties. But for now, I want to invite Chaz right up front and center, and I am ready to invite our trees to bring in the hip hop vibe right now. Yeah! Hip hop hip hop Oh, I love it. Hmm. <laughs> 
My heart rate is up. I feel better in my body. Wow, I even need to take a deep breath right now. Okay. Hopefully, if you were dancing with us, you're taking a deep breath. Let's do it together. Ready? Okay. I need Ooh. one more. One more. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Dance is so good for us. And because I don't want you sitting down, let's go ahead and get right into the song again. Now this is when you get it. One you practice, time. now you're the star. Get it. I love animals. Do you? I actually sometimes find it's easier for me to speak with animals than to speak with people. Do you find that the case for yourself? I find that when I speak about how I'm feeling, it helps me to regulate my emotions. And one of my favorite friends to talk to is my friend Grand Sappy. He's a wise old tree and he always gives me incredible advice. I'd love for you to meet him. Come on. Hi, Grand Sappy. Uh, nice to see you today. Hi there, serendipity. <laughs> I was just telling my friend about happiness, and I was curious if you could tell us how you find your happy place. 
Well, to log into my happy place. Get it? Log? <laughs> yes. Anyway, I like to notice things around me that make me smile. Believe me, serendipity. Believe me. Smiling leads to happiness. Smiling leads to happiness. That's great advice, Grand Sappy. I can imagine you have seen a lot in your long life. Good times and bad times, I can imagine. Yes, I'm old. Old. Not the oldest. There were trees before me. But I have learned to sway the winds of change and move with flow. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's... It looks like my friend Grand Sappy is taking a nap. He does that sometimes, even in the middle of us talking. <laughs> Ooh, I do see my friends the Happy Hedgehogs are out for a play today. Oh goodness, and my friend Olga, the unhappy urchin, looks upset again. I wonder if I can help. Hi, Olga. It looks like you're having trouble with your uh, mask. Can I help? Uh, I am so unhappy today. This mask is stuck in my spines again, and everyone seems to be avoiding me. I can imagine that's not a very good feeling to feel. I sure don't like it when people have to stay away from me. It makes me very unhappy for sure. <laughs> When I feel unhappy or don't like the way I'm feeling, I often try to find a solution. Let's see, what could be a solution today? Ooh, I know, do you like baby animals? I like them most of the time when they are nice to me. Oh, sure. Well, do you see the hedgehog family playing next to you? They're friends of mine and I would love to introduce you. Hi, happy hedgehogs. This is my friend, Olga. Hi, Olga. It's nice to meet you. We are outside, so it is safe for you to enjoy this moment with us. How can I enjoy this moment when we still have to stay so far apart? It's already hard for friends to hug me because of my spines, and sometimes I really, really want to hug. Oh, I understand. That's a question that's been on my mind, too. One thing that makes me feel happy is to focus on being present here and now. Every moment is a new one for us to enjoy. How do I find joy in this moment? I don't think I understand. To be content with this moment right now. Let go of past and future thoughts. Just allow. That sounds kind of hard. Is there another way to find my happy place? Oh, yes. <laughs> the easiest way for me to find happiness is to be grateful and move with love, ease, and grace. Grin from within <laughs> and share your smiley face <laughs> or eyes. Ah, oh, that's great advice. I know that I'm grateful to be with you all today. What are you grateful for, Olga? I am grateful I met new friends. I'm also grateful to be here today. Yay, good. Yay. <laughs> that makes me a happy, happy hedgehog. Hedgehog, hedgehog, hedgehog. Happy, happy, happy. Yay. <laughs> do you want to hang out with us today? We're going to do an art project. <laughs> I'll be happy to. Oh. I do feel happier. Thank you for being my friend. Be sure to treat each other well. We are all just different trees in one big forest. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's Animal Fun Facts time. Let's talk hippopotamuses. These guys are huge. They're the third largest land animal, which is funny because they spend a ton of time in the water. Being in the water helps them stay cool in the African heat, and the name hippopotamus actually means water horse. They even give birth in the water. Hippos are easy to identify because of their short legs, barrel-shaped body, and huge mouths. You know those short legs can run up to 30 miles an hour? Hippos look cute, but they wouldn't make very good pets. They can live up to 50 years, weigh up to 4,000 pounds. Where would we keep it? 
Have you ever tried to draw a hippo? It sounds like fun. If you do, be sure to share your art with us and draw in plenty of grass. Hippos love grass. And it's probably really hungry from running fast and hanging out in the water, living its best life in Africa. Ah, <sighs> hippo life. Thank you so much for joining me today on Our Enchanted Planet. Remember, it's a place where everything is possible. I really had a good time joining you today. And if you'd like to join with us more, have your guardian connect with our website and learn how you can be a part of Our Enchanted Planet. Do you remember the Happy Hedgehog's advice on how to find your happy place by being grateful for what you have? Well, I'm grateful for getting to spend time with you today. Thank you so much. It's very special to me that we got to spend this time together. Before we say goodbye, I always love to express the attitude of gratitude. It's my key to a positive mood. See you next time, friend. <laughs>